<clears throat> so in this last example of combining hierarchical models uh, with nonlinear models, uh, I want to come back to an example that I started at the very beginning of the semester. And in this particular example, I want to focus on the idea of using uh, hierarchical nonlinear models to combine uh, multiple sources of data. In this case, we're going to combine multiple sources of data uh, to estimate the canopy light environment. As noted in, in previous uh, examples in labs, uh, plant growth does depend on light, uh, but it's often hard to measure directly how much light an adult tree receives. Uh, but there's multiple sources of proxy data that we can use to estimate that canopy light environment. And so in this case, we're going to rely on on remote sensing estimates of canopy area uh, coming from, in this case, aerial photography, could also come from high resolution remote sensing. Uh, we can use field measurements of canopy status, such as uh, is an individual suppressed uh, an understory, intermediate, or dominant in the canopy. And then we can use mechanistic light models, uh, in this case, using the allometric models that we explored in a previous example and uh, a map of where the trees were in the forest to, to draw three-dimensional trees and pass light through them. This particular example draws on a data set from Duke Forest in North Carolina. It was part of uh, my own dissertation research in collaboration with uh, a, lab mate, a former lab mate of mine, Mike Wallison. And here we're looking at some of the aerial imagery uh, from that experiment where we actually have the ability to you know, see individual tree crowns and also we had this experimental manipulation of creating forest gaps. And this is a, a power line. So again, we, uh, one of the sources of information was a mechanistic model of uh, how light intercepted with canopies uh, that was generated by uh, running a 3D ray tracing model and was parameterized uh, based on a combination of the tree allometries and canopy photos so using photography in the understory to measure light environments and using that to calibrate, uh, how, you know, using those allometries, then calibrate how much light actually passes through tree canopies. So it's a calibrated mechanistic model of light moving through canopies. Um, and this is now showing our, our three sources of information, our, our light model, our canopy status uh, observations, and our exposed canopy area show that these are, are related to, for example, the mechanistic model and the um, remote sensing are correlated with each other, but not the same. And the canopy status you know, shows a uh, relationship with the light model and with exposed canopy area, though uh, much rougher because this is a categorical response. And as I noted when I brought up this example right at the beginning of the semester, how we actually ended up dealing with this was uh, uh, through fusing multiple sources of information using a total of, of four different data models to combine three different sources of information to estimate lambda, the, the, the estimate of the canopy light environment for each individual tree. And so we ended, had uh, two log-log linear models for the relationship between this latent variable lambda and the observed uh, light environment uh, inferred from both the remote sensing and the mechanistic model. We had a logistic model relating um, the light environment uh, that it was experienced by a tree to the probability of observing that tree. Um, and then we had this model of canopy light from the remote sensing being conditional on that logistic model. So we you know, had this log-log linear model that was conditional on uh, this logistic model uh, in a way that's very analogous to how we had the uh, um, maturation fecundity model uh, in a previous lab. Um, so essentially giving us a zero inflated uh, log log regression model and really accounting for the fact that if you don't see a tree in the remote sensing imagery, it probably has a pretty low uh, light level because it's probably in the understory. And then uh, we used a multinomial model, the same model that we discussed in the previous lecture, uh, where we had this cumulative logit model, in this case for three canopy, 
relationship between uh, the light environment and three different canopy status. So this uh, suppressed individuals at very low light, uh, the um, intermediate individuals and the canopy individuals, which have the highest light environment. And in this case, um, all four of these data models went together into one overall uh, likelihood um, where we had you know, information on potentially all four of these, though it should be also noted that we didn't necessarily have observations of uh, every observation for every individual. So sometimes there was missingness. Uh, yeah, to dive a little bit deeper into this model, which I should note, while it's a complicated model, it really just combines uh, different things that we've actually learned throughout this semester into one larger model. So there's nothing actually new in this model. You know, the idea of latent variables are things we've, we've encountered, the idea of, of mixture models, so the idea of, of nonlinear models are all things that we've encountered throughout this semester. This is just putting these things together to build uh, more complicated models, but again, the idea here is we can build more complicated models by putting together uh, pieces that are each uh, simple by themselves. So for the remote sensing, the exposed canopy area, we had this relationship between the true light lambda and the observed, and that true light lambda being a latent variable and the observed canopy area uh, that was uh, this logit model uh, on the true light uh, as a binomial and then this log log linear model. Uh, in this case, we're treating the exposed canopy areas the closest to the truth. So we're acknowledging that there's uh, missingness for individuals we don't see. We acknowledge that there's uh, error in the uh, relationship, uh, but we're not actually estimating a slope or an intercept in this term because we're assuming these things are, are uh, at least on a log-log scale, are linearly related to each other. Um, they're on the same scale. Um, Though we do need to estimate the, the C0 and C1 that describes uh, when this uh, trade-off between observed and not observed is and um, this kind of the slope of that. Uh, for the mechanistic light model, we're going to again assume a log-log linear relationship, um, but we how now actually have a, a both an intercept and slope in that. So we're now treating the fact that the mechanistic light model might actually be biased relative to the remote sensing. Um, well, the mechanistic light model is as an advantage that it provides this continuous estimate of light availability, uh, even to the understory. So in the understory, uh, we, we have an exposed canopy area in the remote sensing of zero. We have a status that's just a categorical variable of one. So we can't really tell understory trees apart, but the mechanistic model actually helps us do that because we get estimates of light uh, for all of the understory trees. And then again, the, uh, uh, the multinomial is just the multinomial we, we've seen in the past. So overall, when we put this all together, this model was fit all at once. So we have four data models, but we're not running four different MCMCs. We're running one MCMC uh, with all four data models at once. Um, we end up uh, being a, to do this because we're able to find the conditional pr probabilities for each of those parameters uh, there's always at least two conditional probabilities, a likelihood and a prior, but there can often be multiple likelihoods in this case. And in, in practice, the MCMC is iteratively updating all of the parameters in the model current condition on the current value of all the other parameters and the lambdas, and then updating those lambdas given all the parameters and iterating through that uh, to converge on these estimates. 